leadership. It's a subjective term. I didn't even realize how subjective it was until I took a class this past semester at Indiana University called leadership training. And when everyone was going around giving their personal definition of leadership, I realized how different everyone's views were. Well, they're different because of the um, you know different experiences they've had and observations they've made, etc. But while everyone's was different, they were all the same at the core. They all have the same foundation. And, you know, everyone agreed that a successful leader should have the ability to adapt to situations, the ability to solve problems, make decisions, better group dynamics. You know, they should be able, basically, to bring a group together and facilitate participation in order to achieve a goal, effectively and efficiently. Well, those are common, I, I believe, commonalities. A lot of people can agree that a successful leader possesses, but I think that what stems... What is the stem of all of these things? What is the foundation of the foundation, if that makes sense, is the ability to observe. Once you have the ability to observe, you can observe problems. You can observe, you know, who works well with who. You can observe that there is a problem within the group and fix it. You can observe what way works well and what way doesn't. And from the experiences I've had as an athlete, um, I wish I could say... You know, I've been an athlete all my life, so I'm 18, and I've, I've been playing since I was like four, so like 14 years of my life, I've been on a team, in a group atmosphere, and, you know, I've dealt with a lot of coaches, athletic directors, team captains, all of the above, and I wish I could say I learned from the best, however, I, I learned from, let's just say I learned how not to lead, and, you know, thinking, trying, trying to think of what to say, an example, I realized, well, all of the examples lead back to one problem. Coaches and leaders don't observe their team. They don't observe who they're leading, so they don't know when there's a problem. Or they don't know that this person can't work with this person, or this person needs to be talked to this way, and this is how they respond to this. And basically, everyone's different. No one's the same, so you can't treat everyone the same. You can treat everyone equally, but you cannot treat everyone the same. And I think if you observe how you treat them, and how they react to your treatment, you can adapt, and um, you can adapt to how they respond, and all of those things, and I think when people see you adapt, when people see you observe what they like, and try to accommodate to them and make things work their way, instead of doing things all of your way, um, I think that is the first step, and that is the, the core quality that a leader must possess. And like I said, I don't think that there is a specific mold that a successful leader must fit. I think that every situation presents an opportunity for a new person to step up. But at the same time, I think that every successful leader does have a specific um, core qualities that they possess. And I think one of the most important qualities is the ability to observe. And I think from there, you know, the ability to adapt, or at least realize you need to adapt, and the ability to make decisions, make successful decisions, and better group dynamics, and solve problems, I think all of that stems from you observing and taking taking a step back and looking at what what you've done so far and what's worked and what hasn't, and that allows you to, um, I think that allows you to be a successful leader.